Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall for this October update for 2018. This video is really going to cover the work on the cobbled yard in the good yard of the branch line. Um, it seems to have taken a little bit longer to record. Um, I seem to have quite a bit to say on it and the, the techniques used for um, producing the yard. So I've really just concentrated it all on that rather than trying to put in some other things that have been done as well. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, before we go over and see what I have been up to, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. One of them is, I mentioned them in the last month, and that's the little layout cards. Um, if you would still like to receive one of these, please just drop me a message through my Facebook page, which I leave a link for um, on the uh, descriptions beneath uh, the video here, uh, and I'd be happy to send you one out. I've received a couple back. Um, I don't have them to hand here at the minute, but I um, received one from uh, Simon at Liverton Junction, um, which was greatly appreciated. Uh, if anyone else would like to send me one, please um, get in touch. I would happily take some of your cards and add them along with the rest on the layout here. Uh, the second little bit of business is a shout out. Um, I normally sort of put a wee video on at the end of the video just sort of linking a channel that um, I feel that I would like to share with uh, some others but I came across this channel um, quite recently actually through him subbing uh, my own channel and I watched a number of his videos and I felt that it was um, I felt I had to share it um, I, w I really was blown away by the workmanship that's involved on his layout. Um, he has half a dozen videos now and he's already shown signs that this is going to be one incredible layout once it's finished. Um, the YouTube channel concerned is Leila or Leila Central. Um, he's from Down Under, uh, Australia, New Zealand, I'm not 100% sure which, but certainly he's, he's from that um, end of the world. So please go over, look at his channel, check out his work, um, and hopefully you are as impressed as what I was whenever I first um, came across it and help support his channel. Okay, so let's move over to the layout and we'll have a look at what's been going on there. Okay, so as you can see, I have been working on the good yard this month. This has taken a little bit longer than I expected, but I'm pleased with the way it's coming out. Um, a lot of the work has been on the cobblestone sections and we'll come to that in a minute. But pr before I do, um, I just want to point out a couple of the other things that have been going on. You'll see in front of you that I have a yard crane now in place. That's from the Wills kit and it's just built as it is on the instructions. Primed with a Halfords Grey primer and then weathered down using some dry brushing of um, blacks and rusty sort of colours. And then a little chain was added to the hook and the chain came th from Scale Model Scenery. I'll add a couple of wee still shots onto this um, just so you can get a better idea of what the, the crane looks like. Moving on, um, I've also got the coal stays finished. Um, some of you will have seen this in a little how-to build video that I did um, a couple of weeks back and um, I'll stick a wee link in the top right hand corner. If you haven't seen that you can go and see how that was made. But the main area of work as I say has been the cobblestones. Now I highlighted at the end of the last video that it was a little bit sort of I didn't want I had an issue with putting the two will sheets together I didn't like that um, clear line that you see between two sheets and in mentioning it last month uh, James from James DEMU commented um, in the comments section and suggested interlinking them together um, so I thought I'd have a go at that and this is what I've done now again, I'd post another wee video, um, or another wee card up in the top right hand corner. I did a video just last week, um, 
on how I went about interlinking these and that's the current state of play. So the, the, the sheets are all done. Now, um, you maybe won't see it from at that angle, but I did make a mistake and I've had to sort of um, fiddle with it a little bit to, to rectify it. Whenever I initially started laying the cobbles, I laid them um, para or at 90 degree angles to the roadside here. But as I progressed to this point here, I soon realized that, well, really the, the, the platform is facing a diagonal and the cobbles probably should have gone in that direction too. So what I've done is using one of the little paving strips that you get at the end of the cobbles, I've made a, um, a sort of a demarcation line there and changed the direction of the cobbles that they run parallel to the retaining wall. If, if anything, it actually maybe adds a little bit of uh, added interest to the cobbles rather than just this run of them sort of running parallel to the wall the whole way up. So it's maybe worked out for the best. But anyway, the stage now is to try and blend these cobble sheets in together and to then paint and weather them. So I think as part of this update video, we'll try and get through that process and hopefully by um, I have that completed before the uh, uh, the updates due up and we can get a com completed shot of what this whole area will look like. So first off, we need to fill in the little gaps in between these sheets. And what we're going to use is some uh, tile adhesive or tile grout. Now this is a white tile grout and I'm a little concerned that whenever I apply it as the white, whenever I go to paint over the top of it, that it may show through some of the colour. Um, or you know you you might get a contrast in the colours between the uh, the will sheets and the whiteness of that. So to counter that, what I'm going to do first, what I've done is taken a small amount of the tile grout and I've added just the smallest amount of black acrylic paint to it and mixed it in and it's changed it to the grey. So hopefully that will help blend everything in better whenever it comes to the painting process later. So let me clear the yard away and we'll get set up and ready to go for um, filling these in. So I'll be back in a wee second. Okay, so we're ready to go. Right, I'm gonna work on this one here because it's closest to the, the viewing on the camera. What I intend to do is use some of the tile grout and we're going to put it into the gaps here. I have a spreader to help smooth it out, smooth out and then I've got a sponge which I'll soak with some water. Similar processes to you would do tile grout on your tiles in your bathroom or kitchen. We'll soak the sponge in water, wring it out, and then rub, rub the sponge over the surface, and that should give us a nice smooth finish. And if we follow through with the um, the the run of the the uh, the cobbles, hopefully we get the finish that we're looking for. So this is the first time I've done this, so anything could possibly go wrong and it will be recorded for posterity. Now I don't have a spreader small enough to get into this wee yogurt pot so I'm going to have to do it by hand. That's actually working out too bad so far. I need a bit of kitchen roll fingers and then we can just use the spreader to get it right up to the edges there. Right and that's on. Take our sponge and we'll just clean the excess off. Alright that's um that's pretty good. Already it looks as if it's just one full sheet. Right, I'm quite happy with that. Up in this no up in this top corner the gaps are a wee bit larger, but I think we can get away with that. And maybe just add a wee bit more to fill it out. I think we've taken too much out with the sponge. Doesn't look too 
too bad. Okay. I am going to go and carry on doing this. I don't think you need to watch me doing an entire area of this. But what I'll do is I go and finish filling out all of these other strips and then I'll come back to you once that's dry and we'll start the next process. Okay, see you soon. Okay, so um, this is the next evening after the application of the tile grout. Everything's now dry and you can already see that those joins are really beginning to blend in with the other cobbles that you would barely even notice where the boards are. These are probably the two worst ones here in terms of this, the spacings between the joins but that's po possibly also being highlighted with the the, the lighter colour of the um, the grout in between but anyway next stage now is to put a coat of primer on it now i'm going to use the halfords um gray primer uh, and it's out of the spray can so i'm going to need to mask up this entire area before i make a start on that so i'll go away and do that and then we'll come back and maybe put the application of primer on right we're all ready to go now i am in an enclosed space in the roof space here and it goes without saying that the fumes off these um, um, these cans are quite potent so I'm going to be wearing a face mask for doing this so I'm just going to crack on this will be the last job I'm going to do up here tonight get out of dodge basically while these fumes sort of linger about here but sure we might as well um, video it for posterity so here goes Right, every modeler I think should show their mistakes. I've primed it and once primed I could see that the joins were still very visible. Now I've applied a wash of black acrylic over this just to make it easier to see in the video. But you'll see for yourself that the joins are clearly visible on each of the sections. And that's something that I had been trying to remove with this interlocking process so I need to go back and rectify that now I've already done it on these plates over here and you can see that they blend in much easier it's very very difficult to see where that join is so to go about that I'm being a little bit more careful with the application of the um, the filler and I'm just using wee strips of plastic card and just working along the ed, ed, lines <coughs> excuse me and once each line is done I'll take a wet sponge as before but what I'm going to do is just sort of work up to the join and not actually over the join let me just do this wee bit here and then I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so that's all level with the top of the cobbles. By taking a damp sponge now, and we're not getting We'll try and get most of the moisture out of the sponge as we can and we'll remove the majority of that filler as close to the line as as close to the join as possible. Now you will probably get can you see this little ridge from me pushing the filler up on top of itself by just dabbing down 
on the top of the the filler with the, the sponge we can eradicate most of that now, I don't want to get this filler too wet because I want to work with it with another strip of card in a wee second and I'll show you what I mean so that's the join well, that's the filler more or less level with the joins now once that's done take another strip of uh, an off cut of plastic card now that's thin enough to get in between the um, you know the grouting sections of each of the, the the cobbles and just run it right across and you're you're creating a new channel and whenever that filler dries that channel will remain in it do you see what I mean and that will help create the illusion that it's one big sheet of cobbles that you've laid down or it's actually more realistic I suppose is what I'm trying to say so there you go now I'm going to carry on and do this I've got another three lengths to do to the right of the one that I'm doing here like I say these ones I'm more or less happy with there's one up here at the end maybe needs just a slight bit of filler once that's done I'll put another coat of primer over the whole lot and if there's any final little areas that need dealing with well hopefully it'll be done and it's only going to be small little sections that need patched up but by putting this work in now it should mean that once the um, once the effect or once the, that illusion of one full sheet of cobbles is down it's going to make it look an awful lot better once we get to the painting process so I'll crack on do that and I'll come back once I'm satisfied that all these gaps are ready um, for actually putting the paint down okay alrighty now as you can see in front of you I have done the little bit of filling that I wanted to it's still possible to see some of the lines where the joins are but some of that's now showing through because um, of the plaster is creating that definition but what we're going to do now is start applying the paintwork to the cobbles and by altering the tones of it throughout we should be able to eradicate most if not all of those markings that are showing the distinctions between the the, the, the sheets but I think you would have to agree that compared to what it was before this is an awful lot better you could go back work on it a little bit more but to be honest I think you're always going to get a certain amount so now what I'm doing is I'm going to apply a wash now at this stage all I'm doing is applying a sort of a medium grey wash right over the whole thing um, if you can see that colour there and I've actually mixed it in I'm using sort of I'm, I'm watering it down but what I'm, I'm watering it down with quite dirty water so I'm um, um, which actually has a wee touch of um, like a red oxide in through it because I actually want to sort of bring out whenever you look at cobbles um, you know, cobbles aren't all one colour they do have a sort of a, a hue tinge to them that can be um, a dark blue uh, sort of a touch of purple you know sort of, um, plum colour to it but you can also get that sort of deep red sort of burgundy hue in it too so I'm trying to capture a little bit of that if I can in this initial wash and once this wash is dried in then we'll start adding in some variations in colour just by sponging it on but what I'll do is I'll carry on doing this once this is completely dry we'll come back and we'll start doing some of the sponge washes all right, so I'll be back shortly. Sorry, I'm back and I almost forgot to record this um, piece. I'm just using a off-cut sponge and I have two mixes of colors, a darker and a lighter gray to try and counter the initial 
um, wash that was put on there and I'm just dabbing it on watered down a wee bit um, to help it sort of seep into the uh, all the contours of the cobbles and it's getting quite frothy here at the minute but that will all sort of settle down as it dries but the idea being that once dry we will have sort of three different layer or tones of um, cobbles on our yard which hopefully should give it a nice varied texture but that's what I'm doing anyway at the minute there's not really much more to see than that but just before I had it finished I thought I'd better stick the camera on so I'll carry on I'll finish this off and we'll come together at the end for the last wee bit which will be filling in the the grout between the cobbles and to me that's probably one of the best bits to do because it just sort of brings the whole lot together so I'll be back in a wee second Alrighty, so we're into the final stage now of this um, process. Um, hopefully you can see in the picture that uh, the, the tonal differences in the cobbles, um, the lights and dark greys from the washes and the, um, the dabbing on of the sponge that we've done previously. I've removed all of the, um, uh, the masking that I had in around the, the retaining wall because I want to be able to put this next process right up to the wall and I think it's easier to do without the paper in the, in the way but this stage now is basically filling in the grouting sections in between the cobbles and what I'm doing is again using an acry uh, acrylics I'm just going to paint it on and then rub it off with kitchen tile and also have a damp sponge to hand if it's a little bit too heavy that I can right wipe off with that too. Now, in terms of the colour to go for in between the cobbles, if you look at any images online, well, I mean, there's any number of choices. You can go for a pale grey, which would be very sort of um, newly laid cobbles, um, right down to sort of uh, an almost black, not black black, but sort of, you know, like a, um, a grey black colour. But you also get shades in between and what I'm opting for is sort of um, a, br a, a browny soily finish. My thoughts are this cobble yard has been down for quite a number of years. It has a certain amount of grime that has built up into it. Certainly where the coal stays are sitting there will be um, blackness working into the, the crevices in between the cobbles. But on the whole it will be sort of um, a mucky brown and then with that after everything's done I can then start applying l little bits of flock and grass and that in, in around those areas too to represent weeds and that that are coming up through those cobbles. So that's what I'm going for. Now this, this application here whenever you do it will also change slightly the texture and tonal colours of the cobbles but that's all part of the part of the process too and it'll just help enhance it even more. So this is the um, the colour I've gone for, like I say, it's a sort of murky brown. Um, now it'll dry a little bit lighter against the grey within that, but basically, good old paintbrush, and we're going to just work in very small areas at a time, and we want to really work into the into the, um, the the crevices of the cobbles. And I think maybe sort of a couple inches square at a time is probably enough to be working on. So work that all in there. Then take a piece of kitchen tile and we want to rub as much of that off as possible. Now you can see already, maybe I should move this over a little bit, that it actually changes the text, the, the colour slightly of the cobbles too because of that brown's working into the acrylic but with a very very light brush of a sponge we can help agitate that a wee bit it will remove some of the stuff from in between the, the, the cobbles as well but that's okay um, we don't want unevenness throughout this entire thing
okay so as you can see there there are certain areas um like this here that are a bit heavier and then there's lighter shades here and that's okay that all sort of helps just create those nice wee differences in amongst the cobbles and make it stand out and make it look just what that little bit more realistic so anyway i'll go on ahead and finish this um, I'll come back with just one final little look at the cobbles whenever we're done um, but primarily this is the job done so we'll just come back at the, right at the very end whenever everything, everything's finished okay so 90% there I reckon at this stage um, I've just put a wee mock-up of some vehicles and pallets and things like that just to give an idea of how the yard's going to probably look once it is actually completed but I'm more or less happy, I think, with how the cobbles have come out. There are still a few marks, particularly along here and here, where you can detect where the um, uh, the sheets are joined. But I think with a little bit more um, um, grasses and things like that applied, some of that will get hidden. But I think on the whole, um, the the results are pretty good and once I get all the other scenery built in around it, it'll look a lot better. Right, I think this video is probably one of my longest yet. I've been banging on about this for quite some time. I hope it's been of some interest to you to show you the process of going through the construction of it um, to this point here. And um, if you have liked the video, um, please do remember to click that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Please like the video and please share it as well and let other people know that this channel is out there. But for the time being, um, for October, uh, this is the end of this update and I'll speak to you soon. See you now.